A very warm welcome to everyone who is present for this webinar, the second of the Learning Curve online series. Most of you know the Learning Curve, APF's English magazines for teachers and heads of schools. Every issue focuses on a subject of wide interest, and the last issue threw light on a topic that every teacher is aware of, that every child can learn and will do so if encouraged and supported. Equally, in the articles, teachers have described ways which are student-friendly and easily adaptable. Issue 6 is a compendium of articles which describe these new methodologies to make learning easier and teaching more friendly. Several aspects were tackled in the issue. We have chosen for this webinar a subject that presents the greatest resistance and creates fear in most students' topic to the point of a phobia. It is not difficult to understand why maths is filled so much. It is highly abstract and requires children to learn a whole new set of symbols almost simultaneously with the first set of symbols, the alphabet, the each of any language. And added to that is learning the four functions, which are the basis of further learning, upon which the whole edifice is built. Yes, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And as if that were not enough, when word problems enter the picture, the situation becomes even more complex. So to demystify uh, these four cornerstones of maths, we have with us today Swati Sarkar, who is well known to most of you as a maths teacher of great innovation, innovative skills. Her models are justly famed, and her aim is to create awareness of what maths actually is, essentially logic. Swati Sarkar is an assistant professor at the School of Continuing Education and the University Resource Center, as in Pengi University. Mathematics is the second love of her life, the first being drawing and art. She has an um, NSTAT from the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, and an MS in Mathematics from the University of Washington at Seattle. She has been doing maths with children and teachers for many years and is deeply interested in anything hands on, origami in particular. One last word we welcome questions from the audience and we'll try to answer as many as we can in this session. Please type your question in the chat box and we might bundle together questions which are same. Welcome to LC Online Swati. Thank you for sparing this time to be with us. Thank Thank you. You, Swati. The first question well, I have, um, Swati, I have the first question and that is, how can we inculcate the language of maths in children so that they are better prepared when they come to learn maths? Yeah. So first thing is don't make math only a classroom subject. Talk about math, about anything and everything. You see a pattern, you know, as you see tiles on the roads or anywhere, there is math hidden in that. You have you know, find math around and talk about that. Play with the terminology that is in math. See, for example, when you hear the word triangle, break it, triangle, something that has three angles. Then quadrilateral. So something, so you know there are bilateral, trilateral treaties that get signed in history, right? So, lateral means sides, okay, bi means two, tri means three, quad means what, four. So, something with four sides, okay. Now, then comes pentagon, hexagon. Okay, so penta is five, hexa is six. What does gone mean? Does it mean side? Does it mean angle? So, whichever language you are teaching math in, play with this terminology. Because often that's what puts a lot of children off. And see math around. Um, 
in patterns if you want to describe anything precisely uh, you need to use math so for example suppose uh, as i know i have been uh, told by one of my colleagues that there are two communities and um, they use two different kind of vessels so one community uses vessels which are long and slender like this another community uses vessels which are you know more flat like this so both are cylindrical so how do you differentiate that now to do that you need to use math so you can describe that in this case the height is more than the diameter okay so the height is greater than the diameter but in this case the height is less than the diameter now that's a very precise way of describing what is going on okay and that is where math comes in handy it doesn't necessarily only mean computation that too but you know it is there everywhere when you have to give direction to somebody coming to your home that may involve math okay uh, spatial understanding and stuff like that right. so yeah use math in day to day language bring math into conversation you know use puzzles and stuff children love them and challenge them that is something we often don't do with underestimate children but they do love a challenge when they start to think that they are getting something they want to try more and more so that they can master it so play around with math and use math in terminology they will get it um so i'd like to ask you now let's imagine that uh, you're entering a class and you have to teach uh, these four um, functions uh as i remember it it's addition first how do you go about actually teaching the four the additions um addition subtraction multiplication and then finally division which is an amalgam of all the other three um you know processes so could you just describe what you actually do let's say when you go into a class how would you start it how would you expect the teacher to go about it in a way that is child friendly see often in math classrooms we boil it down to you know uh, algorithms and procedures and stuff like that you know we jump into the computation without uh, getting into why they are doing it so what i would recommend is start with a context okay suppose you know you are collecting things and there are you know two three people collecting things okay so how much did the first person collect how much did the second person collect how much was collected together from that context you bring in the operation of addition so before jumping into the symbol and computation start with the meaning and of course you know children need to have a sense of number hmm. if that bit is shaky then on what basis are you going to build up the next thing so definitely check if the children understand numbers if you say 17 do they understand what quantity 17 represents and how do we write 17 as a numeral so check those things and then you know build up the story okay you know you can do simple things so for example you can have a collection of tables you ask one child to you know put his or her hand into that bag of tables and draw out as many as possible okay and then again then another child to do the same okay and when both of them so how much did you get together that's an addition context right, right? so then you represent how much the first child got using a number then you introduce the symbol of addition which is this plus sign mm -hmm. and then you put the second one and you build it up that way 
the algorithm part should come in much later actually ideally children in class 1 2 should play with adding and subtracting in different ways for example if you are adding say 29 it is easier to add 30 and subtract 1 okay so those kind of things uh, if they need to play with quite a bit as much as possible and uh, you know so that playing with numbers makes them become friendly with math and they know that all oh, it can be done in many ways okay those are very important and then later on you build up to uh, you know the standard algorithms and all those things mm. now the important thing in all this is that th this is where you absolutely should use a lot of manipulatives and nowadays textbooks are full of them if you look at ncrt textbooks there's a lot of that on this and you can take a cue you know it, it doesn't start with the standard algorithm it uses various things to talk about addition subtraction and then gets into the algorithm so that's how you start it so similarly you know you can set up a context for subtraction you know you are carrying something and you didn't realize that you know you had a hole in your pocket or something so some things fell off so you had initially put in let's say 12 marbles in your pocket and then when you reach school you took out the marbles and you realize there are only seven so some of them have fallen off so how many fell off that's a subtraction context okay mm -hmm. now another important thing here is every addition can be written as two possible subtractions okay. so to give you an example you can have 7 plus 5 equal to 12. This is an addition fact. And that can be written as two subtraction facts. 12 minus 7 equal to 5. And 12 minus 5 equal to 7. Now these kind of things should be tried a lot. So that children are familiar with this. How these two operations are interlinked. Okay, and this will help later on in with the word problems also a lot. So given this context of, you know, 12 marbles and some fail off and seven remain, right? So the number of marbles that remained and the number that fell off together is the number that was originally put in the pocket, right? right? Now, this one represents that number of marbles originally put in minus number of marbles that remain is how many that fell off right right in this case it represents that the, the number of marbles that was originally put in and then something some fell off and then what was left right so the same context can be you know turned around in different way to pose as an addition problem or as a multiplication problem also, uh, I think both kind of problems should be done. So, for example, I believe you will be able to see this. Uh, you can give problems like 7 plus 5 equal to 1. Okay, that's a pure addition problem. You can also give that 7 plus 1 equal to 12. Now, that's a reverse addition problem, right? So, uh, in this case, uh, you actually need to subtract to do the addition. And, and this kind of problems can be used uh, before you get into subtraction. From here, you can come to this. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, then when it comes to multiplication, you can start with, uh, you know, uh, repeated addition. You can have, let's say, several bowls and you put the same number of marbles in each bowl so how many marbles are there total something like that instead of bowls you can just have children and distribute something uh, to them so uh, so it, it can be built up that way 
And uh, again, just like addition and subtraction have this relation, every multi uh, similarly, every multiplication can be written as to division. Okay. Then also multiplication, as far as whole numbers are concerned, can be seen as repeated addition. Mm -hmm. And similarly, division can be seen as repeated subtraction. So all these interlinkages need to be brought out as well. Uh, but actually, when we write up, the, these are the points at which uh, I think children flounder is when, for instance, you write up 12 and then underneath it you put 7 and then the idea of borrowing comes. How do you uh, is something that most children, because they look at 2 and then they look at that 7 and they think, how can I take 7 from 2 and then you learn the concept of borrowing. Can you explain that? How would you explain that in the classroom? Yeah, so that is where, uh, you know, if anybody says they can do it without any kind of manipulative, any kind of concrete material, frankly, I don't know how it works. Okay, this is where you absolutely have to use some kind of manipulatives, ideally something that can be easily bundled and unbundled. Okay, <clears throat> simple sticks, um, toothpicks, you know, sketch pens which have dried out and can't be used anymore all of these things can be used uh, you know uh, to bundle and you can use rubber bands along with it okay so if you want to do this uh, first of all what is 12 that is something you have to make sense of yes now when you write 12 this one actually is a 10 so it stands for 10 and uh, this Two stands for one. So this means you actually have a bundle of 10 and you have two loops, hmm. right? And you need to take away seven from it. Hmm. Now you cannot see seven here, there is only two. Hmm. Okay, the rest are in the bundle. So what do you do? Don't give away the answer. Ask the children what can we do? Hmm. Hmm. Now somebody should be saying, you know, we can unbundle. They know right. that bundle has 10 and they should right. have a sense that, you know, 10 is bigger number than 7. So, we unbundle. So, I'm just going to erase that and, you know, draw out 10 sticks. Now, now you have enough sticks. You have more than 7. So, take away 7 of them. Okay. And you take them away. You actually physically remove them. Okay. Right. So then you see how much is left. You can see it clearly from here. Right. Right. Okay. But, uh, the, the, if this is how it is done, and then it's right simultaneous. It okay. becomes more interesting when you have, uh, you know, more than one bundles here. Okay. 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 Because, you know, here that one bundle, you unbundle, everything has become units. Everything has become ones. But if you have more than one bundle, there will be still some bundles left. Okay. Okay. Can you demonstrate that for us? Yeah, sure. So let's take another case. Let us take, for example, let's take 51 minus. 27. Okay. So 51 will be 5 bundles and 1 loose. Hmm. Now we have to take away 2 bundles and 7 ones. Hmm. The 2 bundles are not a problem. But again, we don't have 7 loose. Okay. So again, problem matters. Ask the children what should be done. And somebody should then say that you know you do you unbundle one. Okay, so you unbundle one of those and then you got it. Now that same thing has to be recorded here. So right now, how many bundles you have? You have four bundles. Right. So you write that four here. And you have 11 words, so you write that 11 here. Now, what you have written is exactly what you see here happening. 
Right. And then you subtract. Uh, you you sw- take away sw- the sw- Swati, so, so, sorry to interrupt you. Could you also do this bundling in Hindi? There are lots of uh, requests for uh, you know explanation in Hindi. Okay, I'll try. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. In Yara loose sticks may say Saad Nikalenge. We'll remove seven sticks from here. Okay, so we remove these and so, how much time is it? 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what comes here. And we have to remove two bundles. Okay. So, then how many bundles do we 1, 2. Okay. So, this is how you see whatever the material is going to be done. We are going to Okay. So the manipulatives engaging with the manipulatives and this pen and paper, hmm. they have to go simultaneously, you know, uh, together, not one after the other. Okay. As I say, that one day, this day, we will play the other day. We will do this. No, both sides should be together. Okay. And at every point, you ask the children what they should do. So, what do you need to do to give them the answer? They have already the knowledge that they have already learned. They have to do it on them. They will tell themselves. And when they tell themselves, they confidence to them. They think that they have to do it. The teacher has not told us, they have to do it. See, this gives children the confidence that they can do. It's right. not that the teacher told them what to do. They right. figured it out. They solved the problem on their own. So it gives them more ownership of their own learning. And they right. feel interested. It's like, you know, I can do. And that makes a huge difference. When the children feel that we can do it ourselves, then, you know, they also enjoy it. And they also engage more well. Physically present, mentally absent, वो वाला चीज नहीं होता है। वो physically and mentally दोनों ओर से वहाँ पे उपस्थित रहते हैं। Right. Okay. Uh, related to this, uh, Swati, uh, Aditya Sharma has written seven plus what is equal to twelve. Students are rarely familiar with this type of relation, and usually they add up both the numbers. They add That's up true. seven plus what? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think he's just making a um, observation, and yeah. um, so this so is where we can something yeah. else also. Okay. Okay. So okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead and. Okay. Hello. Seven plus something is twelve. See, this is where what you can do is you can use something like Ganit Mala, which is basically a, uh, a you know bit of. A string of bids, so 10 bids. Are in one color and 10 more are in the other color and the pattern alternates. And it goes up, okay? Now, Isma say we need 12. So, this is where is 12. Right? And this is where is 7. Now, if you do this, then you know ki how much do you need to go from 7 to 12. So, how much is the gap here? And you can see there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you need, when you have this problem, 7 plus what equal to 12, it comes out very clearly from here. Okay. And later on, you can abstract it out on a number line. Okay. 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 So on an abstract number line, it will look something like, you know, 0, 7. And you don't need to bother about what is in between. And then you will have... You know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? Okay. 
and then the same thing comes here right so you have got seven then eight nine ten eleven twelve and you know that you know you have counted five spaces right so that's how you gradually abstract out and because children don't get exposure to this kind of problems is why they struggle with word problems because they haven't given given enough opportunity to play with different situations okay um, i would recommend our uh, word problem pullouts by padma priya shirali and there um, she has used you know how to children can draw to make sense of this kind of problems you know and uh, how that can help children solve this word problems yeah yeah how do you you know see word problems are written in you know english hindi or some natural language hmm. and the job of the student is to convert that into a math expression like this right and then solve it now converting that natural language stuff into this mathematical language is the hardest and we don't have adequate practice of that okay so what padma priya does in that pull out she uses the visual media which is usually very you know uh, comforting for most student they they that makes sense to them it makes meaning to them to transition from the natural language to this to the mathematical language shefali uh, so uh, a lot of uh, requests for uh, hindi <laughs> so maybe okay. some part of it yeah so but let me, uh, let me i think to be in hindi also so hamara okay. jo word pull, uh, word problem pull out hai uh, usme padma priya shirali ne पिक्चर के जरिए जो पिक्चर बच्चे खुद बना सके उसके जरिए ये जो वर्ड प्रॉब्लम्स है उनसे हम एक गणित गणित वाले जो एक्सप्रेशन है वहां तक कैसे पहुंचेंगे उसमें अच्छी तरह से उसने बताया है क्या है कि बच्चों को जब एक जो नेचुरल भाषा है उनसे जब ये गणित की भाषा में चीजों को लाना पड़ता है उसमें दिक्कत होते हैं और इसमें क्योंकि हम इसमें एक तो ज्यादा प्रैक्टिस नहीं करते इनको लेकर ज्यादा खेलते नहीं है तो इसके लिए पद्म जी का जो सुझाव है कि अगर हम जो हम पढ़ रहे हैं उसका जो अर्थ निकल रहे हैं उसका अगर तस्वीर बनाएंगे तो और सही सही समझ में आ जाएंगे क्या बात हो रहा है ठीक है क्योंकि क्या होता है बच्चे अक्सर जब वर्ड प्रॉब्लम्स झेलते हैं ना वो कीवर्ड्स कुछ चुने हुए शब्द को ध्यान देते हैं पूरा वाक्य पढ़ते नहीं है दे डोंट रीड द होल सेंटेंस दे लुक फॉर जस्ट कीवर्ड और उसके आधार पे दे ट्राई टू कंस्ट्रक्ट दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन और इक्वेशन ओके और उसमें गलती हो जाते हैं कि दो नंबर दिया गया है टोटल दिया गया है तो जोड़ लो ऐसा नहीं भी हो सकता है है ना उन दो नंबर में से एक टोटल हो सकता है वन ऑफ द टू नंबर्स में बी द टोटल तो इसीलिए बारीकी से पढ़ना जरूरी है तो इसमें एक चीज और आते हैं जब बच्चे डायरेक्टली टेक्स्ट बुक या क्वेश्चन पेपर या वर्कशीट से ये पढ़ रहे हैं उनका रीडिंग एंड कॉम्प्रीहेंशन स्किल कैसे कॉम्प्रीहेंशन स्किल ये देखना जरूरी है दैट नीड्स टू बी चेक and that um, may not necessarily be only the purview of the math teacher right. it may have to do with the language teacher also okay i mean let's face it we are increasingly becoming non readers because there is huge amount of audio visual media everywhere okay even those of us who you know used to be bookworms will would tend to become less of a reader now you know so that issue is there earlier pretty much the only thing now mobiles are there okay with the audio visual and everything. so that is a problem 
okay and that needs to be addressed and that is uh, why where i have made one recommendation see usually children are given word problem and then they are supposed to come up with this on the other hand why don't we give them something like this or even something simpler you know something like 12 minus 7 okay why don't we give them something like this and ask them to create word problem okay i mean class 3 onwards they should be able to do it i mean the teacher should try to coax it from maybe class 2 but they should be able to you know uh, create word problems and once they start doing it trust me they are way too creative compared to us and they will surprise you with the different kinds of context that they bring in and you will know get to know about their beliefs what they ha- is happening in their life etc all of those things will happen the advantage for the teacher is if you ask children to create word problems and you collect them they may create them orally also as a teacher you should write them down or you can give them as homework and collect them you have a bank of word problems for the next class for the next batch swati okay. uh, two two very interesting questions okay yeah so bede he sen gupta is asking is it important or helpful to carefully choose words and phrases while explaining mathematical uh, processes hmm? is it important Absolutely. to carefully choose yeah what is that yes. another uh, question i'll just uh, read out the next one also kunal sha is asking is counting up to 100 a must is is it a prior condition to start with operations okay so i'll ask respond to yes. uh, the first yeah. question yes you have to be careful with the phrases you use a typical thing that the teacher will say is well you can subtract 12 from uh, 7 from 12 but you cannot subtract 12 from 7 now it's not that you cannot you can the moment you go to class 6 and you start integers you can right so it's not correct to say you cannot you can say not right now we will get a different kind of number which is very peculiar very weird bahut ajeeb sa cheez hoga agar hum 7 se bada ko ghatayenge to fir hum abhi wo nahi kar payenge hum abhi nahi kar payenge we won't be able to do it now which is very different from it cannot be done kar hi nahi sakte hai na to isme thoda dhyan dena bahut zaruri hai फ्रैक्शन में भिन्न में ये बहुत होता है द वे वी डिस्क्राइब लेट्स से थ्री फोर्थ ठीक है तीन चौथा कि वी टेक अ होल वी स्प्लिट इट इक्वली इनटू फोर पार्ट्स एंड देन टेक थ्री आउट ऑफ दोज थ्री आउट ऑफ दोज फोर या दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन वर्क्स फॉर प्रॉपर फ्रैक्शंस बट द मोमेंट यू गेट टू फाइव फोर्थ दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क so you need to if you tweak it a little bit okay so you have a whole you split it into four equal parts instead of saying you take three of them you say you take three such pieces the moment you say such pieces then the pieces don't necessarily need to come from that whole only but they have to be identical okay and again this is where if you have manipulatives that really help if you have you know fraction pieces made out of cardboard and stuff okay then that helps you know how a 1/4 piece looks and you need five of them to make 5/4 as simple as that so this small thing about of unme se or rather than uh, you know instead of that if you say like that where i say makes a huge difference okay so yes um kunal's question was can you repeat the question please yeah yeah just one okay is counting up to 100 a must is it a, a prior condition no. to start no okay what i have seen happen in digantar and it kind of makes sense to me 
see when you are learning numbers right now the way the syllabus is for ncert and that's what most states are following up to class 1 you teach the numbers up to 10 uh, up to 100 zero to 100 and you do addition subtraction only with uh, up to 20 okay you don't exceed 20 and then in class 2 you do addition subtraction all the way up to 100 instead of that what if we chunk it like we teach numbers now you teach numbers up to 10 do addition subtraction within 10 you teach numbers up to 20 do addition subtraction within 20 this part is there after 20 instead of jumping straight all the way to 100 why not split it at 50 okay now when you split it at 50 you do more addition subtraction with numbers up to 50 at at each level you can make it deeper and deeper you can add more you know more meaning more context more types of things and stuff like that and so basically what you are doing is you are teaching them numbers and as soon as they learn a whole bunch of numbers they start to play with that using addition subtraction and once you hit 20 you can introduce even multiplication division a little bit just a little bit i'm not saying tables don't get into you know memorizing tables and stuff just the meaning just the symbols what does it mean once you get up to 50 maybe you can get them to construct tables of 5 up to tables of 5 you know ab bachcho se banwa sakte hain tables agar bacche khud banwayenge to unko yaad bhi behtar rahega unko pata hai ki kaise bante hain to ye ek poem ki tarah yaad karke wo recite karne wala cheez nahi hoga okay Uh, there is a question by MV. The concept of place value should be considered along with the operations, or first we need to go with place value. Get that? Absolutely. Without place value, how do you make sense of any number which looks like uh, this or this? Okay. How do you make sense of this? How do you make sense of this? This is not three and seven. This is not five and two. But it's fifty-two, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven fifty was still easier. Scientists and bah. Fifty-two. It will be bahwan or something. I'm not very uh, sure how to pronounce it. Uh, those are even more complicated stuff. So to make sense of what this thing is. you need to you know get into place value so that has to come before you get into addition subtraction unless children understand that well there's no way they can master the you know addition subtraction very well no way so it's uh, a pretty easy yeah uh, thinker is asking do we say a cone has a vertex or not for primary grade when the definition of vertex is about meeting of edges spaces in case of polyhedron uh yeah so yes a cone does have a vertex but i'm not sure if that word needs to come in at that point you can simply say that the cone has a corner a point or something like that and yes This is exactly what I'm saying. You have to be very careful of what you say. What about the if you are phases, talking about yes. polyhedra, things which are made of, you know, plane surfaces, plane faces, for them that definition of vertex will work. But not for a cone, which has curved surfaces, which is not a polyhedra. So that is why when you are thinking of definitions, you need to think about all possible situations. otherwise you will be in trouble very good question okay. though yes all uh, very very nice questions very interesting purna j is asking can kindergarten children learn simple addition and subtraction within 10 we see such syllabus in ukg absolutely uh, 
what i would say is uh, if you look at how montessori does stuff uh, the it it really provides a very strong mathematical uh, base it really creates that for the children i may be a bit biased because i am a montessori kid myself but i have seen other schools and other children their base mathematical base becomes so strong that they are not scared of large numbers at all montessori kids start playing with large numbers way be before other children do so yes it can be done but it has to be done with concrete material not pictures actual concrete material where they put together etc do that kind of stuff yes absolutely it can be done right uh, so chitra shridhar has asked a broader question what lessons can we take from maths teaching to use in teaching other subjects as well would you like to take that swati okay that's a very interesting question <laughs> um see math is something that can actually help a learner become self dependent see in math once you define things uh what it is they have a life of their own once you define what is a 2 once you define what is 5 once you define what is addition plus 5 has to be 7 there is no nothing else okay so then what happens is once this basic things are clear children can start playing around with them explore and learn new stuff on their own this really helps them become self dependent learners which can actually help them with other subjects also next is once they get it they can create their own puzzles own problems own questions okay in fact when they start playing around with numbers uh, this has happened to us a lot trust me new questions emerge and then you try to find answers to that okay and so you start asking core question you start guessing like you see patterns and you start to guess okay then will it be that and then you have to actually you know do it rigorously to show whether it will actually happen or not which will later lead on to proofs and so on and so forth so all this thing about you know observing a pattern making a conjecture then verifying it this is how knowledge is constructed whether it is science social science anywhere right so math can provide that in fact uh, honestly speaking uh, out of the different forms of understanding that exist math is the only one that starts in primary level science uh, doesn't start in primary it starts in upper primary level social science start uh, and history they start at the upper primary level so math is the only form of understanding that starts at, in the primary level uh, and so it has it can teach you a lot but most important what it teaches you is you don't take things on faith you kind of you know you can ask for justification for anything and everything conventions are arbitrarily decided so they can't be argued about conventions could be different so you know they have been arbitrarily chosen so that's it okay by nature they are arbitrary but other than conventions everything else is there in in a particular way for a reason so you don't take it on faith or because some authority figure says so you seek justification you ask question okay you challenge beliefs and these are very important things for you know anything right otherwise uh, knowledge can yeah very interesting swati uh, there is a question by shan mohammad gaur about the how how the, we can get children to solve a word problem like there are 75 words sitting on sitting on a tree 30 more birds flew to the tree how many birds are there now so i think it's 30 more flew to the tree 
yeah there were there were 75 birds on the tree and then 30 more flew into it so this can be simply done on the number line also uh, so you can basically say okay so there were already 75 birds now 30 more flew to it right now you yes, can think yes. of 30 as 10 plus 10 plus 10 and you get that very simply and, and you can initially do it here like this and then you can do it mentally also now uh, Dr. If, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Please if go children ahead. are familiar with something like ganit mala and and that kind of manipulative this thing comes out becomes you know second nature to them without the manipulative it takes longer but it can be done okay uh dr javed Akhtar is asking when we post a word word problem before the student should we use local language age appropriate example material from current environment i think absolutely you start with that yeah. Yeah, and as the age grows, as children become older, you try to grow their world. You bring in context that they may not be familiar with because we don't want, you know, frog in the world. Part of education is also brought into the part of the, yeah. right? So, so as children are more, then, yeah. Yeah, Aditya Sharma is asking a related question. Using concrete material in the classroom for a concept and leaving that con uh, concrete material at a stage both aspects seem to be important how can one decide please share your views using so concrete I material I this class. question is that you start with concrete but at some point you need to you, you know yeah. go beyond no, that. Wait. how do yes. you decide that look any teacher needs to know the children right you know their capabilities what they're capable of are, are, and all of that so what the teacher needs to do is gently but firmly and sometimes maybe you know unpopularly drive children out of their comfort zone okay so maybe give them you know bigger numbers and maybe the class doesn't have so much material for all children. What do you do? Now, at this point, children will be forced to think of something. And pictures can come in handy. So they don't have physical material. They can start drawing. So, you know, when you are there playing with materials, the habit of drawing should come in also. Okay. So what I would say is, you know, we gave you an example of, you know, material and the pen and paper going side by side. You know, some will say pictorial and abstract, uh, sorry, concrete and abstract. This should be followed by pictorial and abstract. Technically, I did pictorial and abstract. But so they should get into this habit of, you know, drawing pictures and stuff. And then even abstract out, you know, because see, this is where the teacher needs to be a bit evil for a shararati karna chahiye teacher ko. the teacher doesn't necessarily need to be always goody goody you know you have to push the children out of their comfort zone Aaj kal ke bachche, today's children are too smart for their own good often okay if they feel comfortable somewhere okay we will do only this way and we will not push each other to you know become better so in that case the teacher has to be you know evil so to speak you know, give them bigger numbers so that, you know, even drawing becomes boring. It is easier to think or imagine. Okay. So that is how you need to kind of push children out to abstract. I forgot to bring the things up. You know, problematize. But we can draw. Okay. Try it. Okay then maybe somebody will do it without even drawing. And then you ask, how did you do? Let the child explain. And somehow when a child explains, that works much better than us adult explaining. Somehow children get it much better. So it has to be done firmly 
and maybe not all children will get it at the same time okay don't expect all children to abstract out at the same time it there may be differences and some children may need to you know have drawing you know in as rough work or something so this is where uh, you know teachers discretion will come in the thing is what aditya brought in is a very important point up to elementary level and i'm beginning to believe all the way up to secondary at least or even higher secondary start with the concrete but then bring it down to pen and paper both ends are very important okay now if you do things simultaneously the way we demonstrated then it becomes easier to do it they can see the connection and they can do it mentally the job of any concrete thing is to create that mental picture once that is done its job is over okay so to figure out if children are able to do that the teacher can give them a problem and ask them to draw it now if they are able to draw it from an abstract thing that means that mental picture has formed so now time to push them out ah <laughs> uh, yeah very interesting uh, veena solanki is asking ma'am do we use the word end point to define a ray a ray um a ray will typically have a starting point so to speak but not an end point right because it goes all the way to infinity so you can say it has only one end the beginning and not you know the other end so to speak a line segment will have you know both ends and you can actually measure it a line which stretches all the way to infinity on both ends will have neither end so yeah uh related to the pay, place value sivarajan is asking i have uh, been getting views that place value should not be introduced in early stages until grade 2 because it leads to confusion please advise when exactly the concept of place value should be introduced yeah there is a school of thought on that but frankly it depends on how you are introducing if you introduce it properly like for example montessori does and many other places does then i don't see why it should be confusing the key idea is very simple whenever you get 10 you bundle if you have 10 bundles you make a new bundle that's it okay and you write number of loose sticks first then the small how many smallest bundles then how many the next level of bundle like that okay this order is a convention the number 10 is a convention but you can justify why 10 because you know how many do we have most people have not talking about rithik roshan but most people have 10 so that's where the 10 came from uh swati so a lot of people look at simple thing the basis of bundling 10 make a bundle yeah. and this is how you write how many bundles that's it nothing else is there and if you do it without the concrete material without children actually getting the practice of bundling unbundling etc etc i don't know with the material etc and i would sub- largely say use arrow cards it came it's a monastery tlm which came into mainstream and that's when the arrow added it it can be taught at the pre primary level very well uh kunal sha is saying that mathematics is an important and fundamental form of education but it cannot be a favorite of all for all children there are children who may struggle with numbers maths how can an educator respond to them the thing is yes agree not everybody with love math okay right. i mean not everybody with love any subject like i still don't like history i'm still allergic yeah. to it okay uh 
But what is important is a teacher should ensure that struggle is not there. A teacher should find out why is that struggle. Usually the root cause of any struggle is lack of understanding. The child doesn't know why we are doing it. It's blindly trying to do it. Okay, just trying to follow steps without understanding the interlinkages. That's where the struggle happens. So what the teacher's job is to figure out where the gap is. What does the child not understand? Okay, and help the child understand. Now, when you do that, when, when there is meaning in what you are doing, when you understand why you are doing what you are doing, that struggle reduces. It's, it's fine if not every child loves math. But it's important that they don't fear it, that they don't hate it, that they are able to do it if they have to. I mean, think about it. We don't need math to add, subtract, multiply, divide in the long run. Even the simplest of phone have calculators. Okay, so that that part is just the beginning. But there are much more beautiful things that math has to offer. Okay. And, and um, that is where, you know, if we, if we can get rid of the fear and hatred, children can get to that. Swati, we are almost at the end of the session. The one hour has just gone, but there are lots of comments in Hindi. But there are no uh, questions. I think uh, all that is written here, you've already answered. But there's one last question, shall we take? Uh, so, Alfia Hussain has said, how do you identify that children are facing difficulty in multiple operations? How do you identify that they are facing difficulty? Um, my guess is by multiple operation, uh, he means that there is a word problem involving multiple operation. Okay. So, One way will be to, you know, look at the work of the child, not just the answer. How did the child approach it? You know, the detailed answer, step by step, what did the child do? Okay. It may help to ask the child to do the problem, you know, in front of the teacher and so on and so forth. But my guess is that if you look at the steps, it should come out. Okay, so two quick questions, uh, uh, Swati, because this is getting uh, very interesting and so many. <laughs> um, should a teacher focus on creating own uh, word problems for concepts or based on the, uh, the, their students' likes and dislikes? I mean, quickly, you just uh, would you like to answer? Well, I already answered this, actually. Yeah. The teacher yeah. should get the students to create two. Not only right. just the teacher. Okay. And um, another uh, question is, as a primary grade teacher, what should we do for emergent mathematics? Okay. I'm not sure what does emergent mathematics mean. Okay. 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 If you don't know, then I <laughs> definitely yeah. don't know. Uh, Let me just put my uh, uh, email ID and phone number uh, and you can reach me at these numbers uh, or at this email uh, if you have any further questions or anything. So it is math space at APU dot yeah, we have it on the screen, uh, Swati. Okay. And the number is okay. Yes. So, yeah. So uh, we would need to end now, but uh, wonderful session, and still uh, a lot of people are writing in to say how how wonderful it has been, Swati, and. Um, yeah, so thanks to you. Prema, your last words. Thank you, Swati, for sparing your time to be with us. It 
was most interesting and I myself have several questions because I, my maths learning was certainly not as interesting as this. I just Fun did. Plus. <laughs> so cool. And I'm sure all of us have become much more conversant with, uh, you know, how these four functions actually operate and what they actually mean. Because up to now, we just very quickly did multiplication and carry over and this and that and the other. But now I think we've all got a clearer picture. So thank you so much for sparing your time, for giving us your insights, and for making maths such an interesting, in a very short time, you've told us how very interesting maths actually is. And this maths phobia, I hope, it will lessen in many of us. And thank you very much to the audience, all the people who've come here and are listening yes. and who spared their evening to come and listen to us. We want to tell you that, you know, we're going to have this session every month and there are going to be writers who have given us lots of new ideas about other subjects as well. So we hope that you will come to other, you know, the next three or four um, learning curve online, which are going to happen on in September, October, November and December and join with us and participate and uh, make it a really interesting interactive exchange. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.